wouldn't have it any other way. So we're definitely defying the stereotypes about marriage. So what we're going to do tonight is we're going to we're going to put some of those stereotypes out there because our whole chat right now are married people. And we need to be telling other people that it's OK to love and to be married because um, y'all already know they scared to death, seems like to me. So before we get started, though, what we're going to say, because, you know, y- y'all already know when we started this thing, we was all over the place, you know, echo here, echo there. So. I'm going to go back to the beginning a little bit and say hello to everyone and thank everyone for coming. I want you to hit the thumbs up as you come in. Make sure you subscribe to this channel. Um, Black man did not get an opportunity to shout out his channel, but I'm going to let him do that when he gets started talking. And y'all just just bear with us and we're going to have a good evening and talk about this thing. Right now, The number one stereotype that I've been hearing from men are women are no good. All they want is your money. Gold diggers. And I want to get my two panelists opinion about that. And you guys, I want you also to um, give us your opinion. And we're going to drop the link in the chat a little little later. Hopefully we can um, successfully do that without all this crazy echoing. Or maybe we'll figure out what's going on and we can have a good night. But um. That's the one I hear the most. Women are no good. They want your money. They're just gold diggers. They have bad intentions. Hello, Miss Sherelle. Our redeemed. Hello. How are you? Thank you guys for coming. So I want to hear what you all got. Well, let me let me give my opinion about that. Now, um, women do want security. Women do want stability. We do. We want all of that. But men... It's your job to lead. And what I suggest you do is not lead with your money. It's good to have it. It's excellent to be on purpose. It's absolutely fantastic when you can present yourself as a man that can lead with purpose and means. That's what we all want. But don't lead with your money because if you lead with your money, you are going to get that woman that intentions may not be for you. So that's a red flag. You know, just be cool, be smooth, just be who you are, because she needs to be with you, not your money. I always say this, and y'all may not agree, but money is easy. So it really doesn't matter if you have 50,000 or 100,000. We can always get some more. So let me hear what you think, Bethany. What do you think about that number one? Women are no good. All they want is your money. I'll meet your mic. In in 2021, unfortunately, I think that is the number one. I, I unfortunately this high value man talk of the last two years, and this is what women want. I, as for men, I understand why they would think that. Um, like you said, men don't need to leave with their wallet. Women do want security, but as a woman, I will say, what are you bringing to the table? <laughs> what do you bring to the table? Um, they Some women say, I am the table. Like, no, sweetie, you know, what What are you to him? What, what benefits do you bring? Uh, for me personally, it's funny because, because my husband's older, I had people assuming like, oh, you probably just a gold digger. I'm like, really? I do well by myself um but the thing is though after we were together got married that definitely changed the mindset because people saw how well I took care of my husband how I catered to my husband and they were like oh she's 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 what you needed and yeah so yeah this day and age money talks um Everybody putting their business out there for everyone to see. So I don't know. That's, I, yeah, I think gold diggers are real. But I, I think the baseline is I just want to be taken care of. I think most women just want to be taken care of. But as a woman, what else is there? You can't sit pretty propped and prim at home. You got to do something. <laughs> you got to do something. I heard that, that one, one benefit. benefit. Well, it was, was a couple, couple benefits, benefits that, that you listed. listed. The two that I heard, heard, though, is I take care of my husband. husband. 
So So men are always talking about what are the the benefits benefits of being being married. married. Mm -hmm. You mentioned the number number one. one. You You cater cater to him him and you take take care care of him. him. Plus, Plus, plus. plus. All right, black man, you're the man in this thing. You're on the opposite side. You send it from a whole different point of view. What do you have to say about women are no good? They want money because you you just been married nine years. So it ain't been that long ago for you. You were out there in these streets. I mean, you know, a song Hopefully. came out. So a song came out a few years ago. She take my money when I need. Right. Uh, so I, you know, I, 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 you know, how can I say this? I think in today's times, that is very, very true. I'll have to agree. Um, it's very, very true. Uh, and I think that the reason that it is is because we have social media saying it's okay. We have. Uh, celebrities saying it's okay. We have women that are higher up, you know, that women look up to say it's okay. We have reality shows saying that it's okay. Um, you know, we have all these different things that are very influential to to women, whether they say it or admit it or not, it's very influential to them to say, you know what, I need this. You know, and I think that a lot of men are also saying in that in the manosphere is that uh women are living in a Disney movie. And they think that everything is going to be given to them. They want to be taken care of. And they, they don't feel like they have to bring anything. They don't have to do anything. Just Prince Charming is going to take up and come show up and just take over. And um, and that's not true. And uh, and I've seen this for myself. It's not Disney, but I've seen women, my sisters, watch a movie and say, you know what? I wish I had a man like Morris Chestnut was in that movie. <laughs> he did everything for her. And she's looking over at her boyfriend like, you ain't nothing. But look at this man. You know, and I'm like, that's a, they, they reading off a piece of paper and getting in front of the camera. That is not real. You gotta, you gotta come up out of it. So I believe that. I think that, uh, I'll share this and I'll, and I'll be quiet. I believe that she made a valid point about bringing it to the table. And I just saw somebody in the uh, comments say, I think it was Noobs Inc. that said, women can't name three things that they bring to the table that a man cannot buy for himself. And you can ask 90% of women that, what do you bring to the table? I am the table. Mm. No, 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 no. On three legs. <laughs> because, <laughs> I mean, <laughs> on three legs. Uh, but but you're not, you, you can't say you're the table and not have an explanation of what you bring to the table. And that's a serious question for men today. I think where it's going wrong, going left, is that women are not used to hearing men be this bold. Back no. in the day, a man would be a man would be accepting and say, you know what, I'll just settle. But me and now, that's why these women out here saying, stop acting. Y- y- y'all need to stop listening, listening to Kevin. Kevin gonna have y'all by yourself. No, no, no. Kevin's gonna have you by yourself. Because w- well, basically, I know you don't agree with everything that Kevin says. However, when he says those things about asking a woman, what do you bring to the table other than vagina? Mm. Because most women will say, I'll keep it clean. I'll keep it fresh. When he comes to the door, he can get it anytime he wants. I'm going to throw it back. Okay. And after you throw it back, what can you give him back in return? What, what can you give him? What can you offer this man? What can you provide this man that he can't? He can buy sex. He can pay for sex. Yeah. But So anything that he can't pay for himself, what are you giving him? Are you helping him build? Are you helping him become a better a man? Are you attached to him spiritually and mentally? Uh, or it's just sex that number one thing in the nineties, it was all about sex, right? Oh, you know, Keith Sweat was big and every Friday night, you know, and, and now the women like, yeah, it's big. Now me and I say, I ain't begging for nothing. What you bring to the table? You don't bring nothing. Goodbye. Mm. I digress. So Bolo, how are you? Bolo say facts. He said, you right on that. But listen, I would say those women who only can offer the table, are probably someone we would say say are red flag women. We shouldn't bother them. They're, they're not the marrying type. They don't know what a wife is mm. because a wife is so much more than that, has so much more value than the table. You know, well, I try to stay away from the table. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm just kidding. But, <laughs> you know, it's just so much more to that. Um, again, I always say this. I, I try my best to complete my husband. I try mo- most days to become one with him. Every day I'm trying to become one, one with him to make him a better man. But then she goes on to say catering. Yeah, you got to rub his feet sometimes. You got to rub his head because he's been out there thinking all day about how to get some more money. So you got to make sure he's good when he come home. Wait, you wait. know? Can, can we have a small commercial so you can tell them to get their pen and paper out? I, uh, what, what, what should I say? 
I, we're gonna have to do. Should I, do I say Fala? Can I, do, can I do it for you? Can I do a small commercial for you? Ladies, yes. Ladies and gentlemen, right now, if, you, if you're logged in right now watching the unsolicited security boss, we would like you to have some tools in your hand. And in your hand, we would like you to have a notebook, a composition book, something to write on and something to write with. She's dropping jewels. This is a million dollars worth of information you're getting for free. If you want to send a catch out, please send that. If you want to donate some money, please go down there and give, a, give money down to the bottom of the screen. Unsolicited security boss. Back at you. <laughs> Absolutely. I'm here. I'm for them. I'm trying to get them all married. But listen, they're making huge mistakes. Absolutely. Okay, Corey, how are you? Glad you're here. So the other thing, too, is this. So we y'all pretty much did that about the, the, the gold diggers. You know, I, I would suggest men stop leading with your money. And you can really figure out who these women are. Okay, so Uncle Stu, thank you. Thank you. So um, the next one is this. Women are not submissive. Oh, mm. my God. Oh, I'm muted. Think oh, about I'm it. Sorry. Black muted. man, we're going to start with you this time. Say it again, because I want to make sure it sizzles in my spirit. Say it again. What's the Go question? Ahead. What's the question? The, the question is, women are not submissive. They are not. These are the defying things that we're trying to say. Okay, no. We're going to go around this and we're going to tell you how you get what you need. Go ahead. Yeah, they're not submissive at all. And, and I'm not just saying this because I'm just, oh, okay, you know, like in today's time, when uh, when you say accountability, women say bashing. If, you, if you're holding a woman accountable, you're bashing them. And so I want to be careful. I want to tiptoe through this room of eggshells real quick and get to where I need to be. So women are not submissive. And, they, and women look at that word as they are as a prison sentence. Right, right. When you're asking a woman, hey, baby, listen, uh, this is this is the it's, it's God, me, you and then our children. And then we then the second thing we have to understand is that the children are a part of the family, but not a part of the marriage. So then we have to divide those two things. Then we have to, you know, so then it comes submission, uh, submission. Oh, I, I'm, I'm not no doormat for nobody. That's what you hear women say. I'm not a doormat. Nobody's going to be walking over me. No, and not knowing that's what that's not what submission is. Submission is your husband having a vision and you're following that vision. And do some men have vision? Yes. Do some not have vision and they're trying to get there? Yes. But you don't have the women that's patient enough to wait on the vision. And then you don't have women strong enough to follow the vision. Woo. Black man, hold on for a minute. Eugene Steele. He says, do you all feel that people? Hold one second. Do you all feel that people get married for reasons other than love? Do you feel that people get married for vain purposes? Absolutely. Absolutely. Money. Bolo, thank you. I will always support you, your work, sis. Thank you so much. Thank Bolo, you for the super chat. My guy. So listen, um, black man, you're absolutely right in your definition for submission. Um, I gotta tell you something. I've been submitted to my husband for a very long time. Mm. And I have a very good life and I don't complain about it. I have the house that I want. I drive the cars that I want. I live the life that I want. I spend the money that I want and it can be this way, but I definitely take the time to pour into my husband and his will is what we're going to follow wow. because it's okay. It's definitely okay. Uncle Stu, the old man on the block. Thank you for the super chat. Oh, I got that. Echo again. Sorry. Hold on one second. Let me let me turn it down. Oh, I'm sorry. Just write music super chat. I, I think I already did that. But guess what? Thank you. If I did not. Noob Sync Plus, thank you for your super chat. I'm just making sure I got everybody, y'all. Y'all are blessing me. And I appreciate it, even with all my struggle streaming. And I appreciate it so much. So with the submission, Miss Bethany, you're new at this. You got 21 years between you and your husband, and you're, and you're saying, saying, I'm going to submit, gonna submit to, you. to you. How, How easy or hard, hard was that, and, and what did you do? And what, and was, what the was the hardest thing, thing it was for you to, to submit to? to? Submission came easy because I saw it with my parents. My mom submitted to my father. My parents have been married for, mom, you're watching this, I think, 36 years? <laughs> I think 36? 36, 37? So it, it came easy because I saw it growing up. Um, yes, the age difference 
my husband was a leader. Naturally, he was a leader. Before he put a ring on it, he was leading. So it wasn't, oh, we had the ceremony, now I don't know what to do. No, I followed his guidance earlier on in our relationship. Um, when we, I think the hardest thing was early on in our marriage, not being able to get my way or come and go as I please. You know, when you live in your single life, it was like, oh, who going? Okay, I'm going here. I'm going there. I have my schedule for the weekend. This is who I'm going with. It wasn't no questions. No questions asked because I'm, I'm doing me. I'm running me. But when you become one, everything has to be, hey, do you mind if I go? Or, hey, this is going on in a couple weeks. Let me forewarn you or kind of can we put it on the schedule? Yay or nay? Being told no happens. It happens and I think people get afraid of losing themselves in a marriage but I'm married now I'm, I'm still young and fine Bethany but I got a ring on it and a man and kids I can't come and go as I please and do what I want with whoever I want no no there's boundaries there's standards we agreed mm. not to go here anymore because this is what we met in and now nah, we not gonna tangle in those areas over there we don't go in that place as a couple by ourselves. I'm going to read. Um, <laughs> um, on Brian, Brian says, I am, I am always, saying, always saying when the man, man is walking in his purpose and the, and the woman, woman is walking in walking in his, his purpose, purpose and the woman is walking in her purpose. And purpose is me. Purpose they can be in both walk and destiny. He's exactly right. And Bolo also had one. They were married spirit and the flesh followed. I like that. New, New Ink, ink plus, plus, thank you for the super chat. chat. I was thought submission was like a new sign and that when it comes to your husband, you slow your growth just, just like you yield the, the sign. But listen, I like that too, and it's exactly right. right. But y'all know what we do at the yield sign. It roll right through them. So we got to get people on track so they understand what to do when that yellow sign is there. Because women today, they're running through them. They're not saying anything. So we do have to make sure that we explain to them that it is not controlling. controlling. It, it is, is not, not losing, losing who you are. are. It's, it's becoming someone, someone else with someone. someone. So, so it's, it's a plus, plus. It's not I'm a negative. negative. All, right, all right, so, so listen, listen, did you did all you want to say, say anything, anything else, else about submission? Because, because that's, that's, that's one of the hardest things that we, that I hear people talk about. And I think what's happening is that there are not enough people out here, married couples, women speaking about being submitted or submission. So they don't have a lot of examples. It's just in their own mind is that they can't have any more of them hot girl summers. But again, if a woman is still choosing to have a hot girl summer, she is not your wife. You picked the wrong one. Yes, ma'am. But also with submission, there's also sacrifice. And no one's willing to sacrifice their a certain lifestyle or their friend group to be married or to stay married. I, but it's funny because people think, oh, women give up so much. But my husband gave up a certain lifestyle too to be married, to be a family man. We we have this running joke between the two of us. He said, if you didn't catch me when you did, you know, me and my boys were planning to go to Brazil. And I'm like, wasn't well, nothing out there in Brazil for you. you. You where you need to be. And so, you know, I'm not doing hot girl summers, but he's not taking guy trips or whatever. If my husband's out of town, it's for work. It's for work. And guess what? He's really trying to tag me and the boys along too, if he can. I had to pause. I'm like, wait, wait, wait. I'm tired of traveling. I got things I need to get done at this house. <laughs> so we're two people are sacrificing a lot to be in this committed relationship. It's two selfish people coming together to become one. And that selfishness has to go. Mm. It won't work like that. You know, you I, know like I like what um, Vaughn said about um, two people being on purpose. Another thing too that I heard and that I know to be true is when a man is thinking about becoming married, I actually think, and y'all confirm, uh, black man, you can confirm this for me. I don't know if everybody thinks this way, all men, but I think they're also looking for a friend. They're looking for someone that they can confide in, somebody they can talk to, somebody they can grow old with. And they realize that they come to that time in their minds that, they can understand the purpose of having a wife and she needs to represent all those things. 
for them to move into the next part of their life. So men, if you can't see yourself with your best friend and with a woman for life, you're not ready to be married. I'm not saying you can't get married or shouldn't be married, but it's just not your time because you cannot be in a marriage relationship as a single person. You know, your mindset changes. And we're going to have a whole show about mindsets because there is a different mindset that goes into being married than it is being single. Bethany just mentioned it. She said, the husband said, if you didn't catch this train, it was on its way to uh, Brazil. You know, he told her. So I, I have a question. Can I ask a question? Yes. I've, I've been in circles before with other couples. And these women are saying, oh, I'm going to play this back. I need this information. These women are saying that it's, Women need women trips. They need to be away from their man. They need to be away from their kids. They need to breathe and go and enjoy themselves and, and get away with the girls for five days or or go and go to the Dominican Republic or go to Las Vegas or go just go have some fun because that's what women need. Guys, please reiterate your feelings on that if you're a married woman. You know what? Oh, Bethany, you go first. Me? Okay, so listen. And I may be, my husband and I may be weird people, but we're together every day, all day. Okay, I'm not saying that's the way that everybody has to do it, but we work together. Of course, of course we, one second. We work together. Of course, we live together. And I would dare to say we've never been apart in the last 26 years, but maybe two days. When we plan something, we plan it together. I can see that um, within a church setting that ladies might want to have. Um, they talk about these ladies conferences and stuff where they go have women conferences and things of that nature. But if somebody's wanting to get away from their husband that much. It's just something that's not being done. It's just it's just something there that needs to be looked out of. I don't I don't know about I need a break. But again, again now, I'm an empty nester. My kids are grown and gone. If you have kids and things of that nature, it could be totally different. So I'm not going to knock the women completely. But if it seems like it's a getaway to get away, I don't particularly agree with that. But if it's a getaway to have fellowship with ladies, to build on becoming better women and better wives, I'm, I'm about that. But that don't be, that's not a five day trip to Dominican Republic. That might be a two day trip to the beach. And we down there re reading a book about, you know, becoming better wives to our husbands. But um, other than that, I'm not getting away from my husband. I got a comment right here. Moments with Mickey Red. They both need trips and retreats. Missing each other is going is a good thing. See, Mickey says it's good to miss your husband. I don't agree with that. I mean, I, if I come upstairs and he's downstairs, I'm I'm good. <laughs> we, I, but we made differently though. You know, it's just we just kind of made different. But if Let me she, if it works for her, yeah. then their relationship is good. But as long as when you get back. Your mind is with him. Or as long as when you are away, you're still one with him. I'm good. But in our marriage, we always fleed anything that didn't look appropriate. So we never put ourselves in positions where the situation may not be appropriate. So Ooh, I see another comment. Paul counter boxing said no such thing as girl trips. When you're married, grown women leave foolishness behind. Hey. We, again, though, we we got to talk about that. Remember I said we have these ladies retreats that they go on with the church, but we're about being better women. You mentioned DR. I don't know if anybody's having any. I don't know about that. I don't know if they have having any uh, ladies retreats for the church down in the DR. I don't know. No, no, no. No. OK, nope. we got a question here. I thought men don't want their wives away under always under them. Isn't that clingy? Well, listen, like I said. Men, I'm talking to the men, buy a house big enough that your wife can be in the West Wing and you can be in the East Wing and then y'all can meet up at night and you don't have a problem. So it's on you, man. 
Big Bad Bull, how are you? So are you saying your husband never had any male friends? No poker or cig cigar nights? Let me tell you, you know what? you? I've talked about this before. My husband has one best friend whom he introduced me to prior to us being married. And he is like my brother. And he has been the only constant person in, I would say, in our lives um, for the last 26 years. Mm. He's been married. He's been divorced. He's been nearly engaged twice. And it didn't work out either time. And we both treat him like he's our brother. But when he's around, it's like he's with us. You know, I leave them to be, but they don't, you know, they don't truly go. If they do in the cigars, which my husband don't do, but his, fr his friend does, they go outside on the deck. They enjoy themselves. They have their um, mixed drinks or cocktail or whatever it is. I'm somewhere else. So he does. My husband's actually uh, a Sigma. So he's done all of that. But when he decided to take on a wife, me. You know, he said, this is this is a job in itself. Let me go ahead and work this out. But I got another uh, comment. And those retreats where their purpose is to make them better women, do they talk about how to be better wives or loved ones? Um, the only, I went on a weekend tr retreat with ladies and it was about being better wives. Um, it was not loved ones, it was wives. And um, there was books issued that were for reading and actually classes and Actually, you could bring your, I don't want to say complaints, but bring your issues to the table because everybody felt like if one lady had it, another lady would have it and it would be discussed in small groups and things of that nature. And um, just basically teaching how to be a better Christian. So it wasn't so much geared towards just being a wife, but your whole um, foundation in Christ is that's what it was. But Girls trips to DR, I would say I have never been on one. And I've never really had a whole lot of girlfriends. I've never, I'm just honest with you, I've never had girlfriends. I've had women who I've tried to befriend, um, but I was always a little different. And it just didn't work out. But I'm nice to everyone. So Mr. Vaughn says, why can't we, oh, why can't we vacation together? I think we can. Although I do believe space is not a bad thing, but you can't be gone too long. I think it's healthy to have a little space. Not too much, though. Like I said, husbands, work hard. Get enough space where your wife can be one place and you can be another. You know, down in the basement. Give him his space in the basement where he can do his stuff or uh, his electronics, his whatever he likes to do. And you'll be somewhere else. I'm saying we together every day, but we're not in each other's faces all day, every day. We mm. have our times and our spaces away from each other. But when it comes to going out of town, we're going together. Now, go back up to the other one. Pull counter boxing because I want to. I can I address this one if you don't mind. Uh, which one was it? Oh, OK. One, yeah. yeah, we didn't. Um, all... We didn't have all these ideas. Uh, we didn't have all these ideas when we had extended family next door. The more successful we became, the weaker we are on on our values. Oh, hmm. my, now, let me say this. Money, money only makes you more of what you already are. But let me, let me say it again. Money only makes you more of what you already are. So if you a hoe broke, you're going to be a big hoe with money. If you are. Okay. You're going to have to help me out with that. How did that. Okay. Wait a minute. Maybe I didn't read it right. Yeah. 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 Because I didn't, there. I didn't understand that to be. I mean, maybe I took it wrong too. Maybe we'll see. Let's see. Let's we see. we might need to go back and read that once more yeah, because read maybe it. I'm reading it with a a different eye. Let's see it again. Okay, pull counter boxing. We didn't have all these ideas when we had extended family next door. You talking about the more successful we become, the weaker we are on our values. It's Not true at all. At all. Not at all. Mm -mm. And I'm not sure what the family being next door has to do with anything. But yeah. I would love for you. We're going to drop the link in a little bit. Mm -hmm. And I want you to come up and explain. Yeah, but I'm moral, I'm moral value heavy. If my parents didn't do nothing else, they put that in me. So I'm just telling you. It may, you know. He's talking about it might have lacked power kids. back in the day. But yeah. morals and values, I, that's, that's who they were. Yeah, he's talking okay. about outside, outside kids.
when he says extended family community, he's talking about people on the out. You know, he, when he come in, if he if he came up, yeah, you'll see, you'll hear, he'll, he'll tell you. Okay, okay, yeah, I want to hear what he's what he's saying. Maybe I'm not referencing it correctly at the right time. But anyway, we're gonna move on because listen, we understood and we already heard about the two main complaints from the men. Um, far as the women, they just want your money and they're not submissive. Submissive. But I want to go to um, the complaints from the women. Mm-hmm. How about that? Mm-hmm. Men are controlling. Excuse me, y'all. Men are cheaters, liars, and selfish. Once a cheater, always a cheater. Bethany, is that not what your girlfriends are saying? My girlfriends don't say that because my they girlfriends don't? are married. <laughs> I'm married. Well, perfect. <laughs> um, but I do think some of them say think when you're married, it's this control. Like I can't do this, I can't do that. Everything's no. And I like to tell them, I'm like, no, it's not no. It's just a consideration. So okay, now, who's, who's, who's saying, saying this to you? you? I, I think girlfriends, girl, okay. single girlfriends, when okay. they think, and then I'm a stay at home mom. I'm a I'm a stay at home wife and mom. So immediately people think oh well you can't spend what you want do what you want because it's not your money i'm like y'all do not have access to everything (laughs) and and that's not a sense of control for me first of all stop thinking this control is called covering it's called protection that's a blessing in that they need to stay women single women you need to stop (laughs) Yes, it's 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 a it, control. Yeah, unless now I'm not for I'm not saying abusive husbands. That's not right. But don't think when you get married, y'all are moving as one. It shouldn't be. If you have an idea, bring it to your husband. He gonna say yay or nay. Sorry. And you, and you know, know what? what too, as far as the control goes, some women need some discipline. Oh, you better not say that too loud. They're coming to get you. They're coming. They're listen, coming. To, listen, my listen. husband has brought all types of discipline to me, even in the business that we have. That you have to be disciplined more than I was willing to be as a single woman. You know, if you want to have something, sometimes you have to have discipline enough to um, obtain it. Ooh. You know, you can't be just loose with your money and and your uh the way you carry yourself your mouth especially women we cannot be loose with our mouths that that's not good at all loose lips i remember probably our first year of marriage um i you know I, i moved into his house and i had all my shoes and handbags and this and eventually he was like you won't be wearing these heels anymore what was my single girl heels he was like now I like my four inches, okay? I, I know I'm a lady. I know how to walk in a good heel. But certain heels was just like, that's not classy. That's not modest. Now, I'm not wearing granny heels. Now, I don't get it twisted. Not in a kitten heel. But certain heel, like certain shoes I knew I wasn't going to work. I wasn't going to walk in anymore. And he right. was like, oh, you can put those in a box. I'm like, oh, I could consign them. He's like, nobody want that. Put that in the box. We're going to oh. bring that to Goodwill. <laughs> he said, did nobody <laughs> want it? Oh, nobody want that. <laughs> and they were too high for you know the norm so yeah it was just part of it um attire my attire technically didn't change because i always tried to dress classy um hence why he was attracted to me but it was just one of those things certain things i know i just wasn't gonna wear mm, i can get rid of that dress that one too <laughs> i think what happens with the control is that um Especially with the dress, because I told a story the last time I was on live about me having a little short skirt. Mm-hmm. My husband threw the skirt away. He did. I ain't gonna lie. <laughs> he did. Um, <laughs> but listen, I think all this stuff requires communication. If some of these men would actually take the time to go talk to the women and let them know that I'm offering this type of protection because... um. A man is bending over trying to look up your skirt and that's not what needs to happen. I would see it for what it is instead of thinking that he's trying to control me. And I just think that we don't communicate enough in couples to know that, you know, if he comes and tells me um, without a rage, you know, 
he's upset about it. But just in instant conversation, listen, that is not becoming of you, the mother of my children, my wife, to have this short skirt on. I need you not to wear that short skirt again because I'm trying to protect you. You don't know what men think. Men be out here having all kinds of th thoughts in their heads when they see women like this. So you don't you don't want to carry yourself that way. I think if we had more conversations like that, calm conversations, then women too will understand that, oh, this is not control. This is him loving me and letting me know that how men really do think. Because they do think that way. And who would better know but a man? We'd just be we just be thinking we're cute, cute out, out here. here. You know, you we, know like we like some, some of the attention, attention, but we don't want the bad attention. attention. But we don't, we don't know, know that it all comes together. You know, who knows how it's coming? You know, who's good and who's bad? You never know. So I just think that part takes a little bit of communication. What about this, though? Black man. Once a cheater, always a cheater. A lie. And let me explain. Let me go into that. <laughs> me, and, me and cheat, right? But I, I, on my channel the other night, um, we had a conversation about this uh, little, just a little conversation about it. Um, me and cheat. Mm, how can I, I'm going to say this. I, I'm not going to be politically correct because I'm never politically correct. Uh, me and cheat because they have voids. Um, me and cheat because they're insecure. Mm. Me and, women want to be safe under a man, uh, but a man wants to be whole with his woman. And so when you talk about when your family becomes more important to you than your husband, when your sister's health is more important to you than your husband's, when you do things for your family that you won't do for your man, when um, when your man calls your name, it's what you want. But when your friend calls your name, it's what you need. <laughs> um, men cheat because of voids. Men have holes in them. And there are women out there that see those holes. And I was, a, let, me, let me tell you what happened one time. I'm not gonna call my brother's name out because I don't. But well, damn, you just—he you know he's your brother. I mean, no, he he's, not my real, right. he's not my real brother. I'm just saying, brother, like this, and I'm a homie. Okay. Um, he he said uh, one time there was a female that he was standing right there, and we were at a place with a lot of people, and she said, "I can tell you're not getting none." She don't even know him. He don't know her. He said, "What?" She said, "You're unhappy and you're unfulfilled." She said, I can tell. She said, if I can see that, what do you think these other women out here see? When the sharks can see the blood dripping out of the, out of the, the holes that these women leave in their, in their men. And I'm reminded of a, a, a mentor of mine. Um, we called her Mama Kemp. Mama Kemp said, women, listen, never, ever let your husband leave home full of something that you could have taken out of him before he left. <laughs> And I'm a and I'm a believer. Oh yes, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, Mr. Ball. Thank you, Mr. Ball. You know, I I, I just I, I, I'm a I'm a prime. But you can so you can say uh, once a cheater, always a cheater. But even if you go to therapy, the therapist is going to tell you who both of you played a part. The man pulled down his pants, but you loosened the belt. <laughs> wait, wait, let me say it again. The man pulled down his pants, but you loosened the belt. And when I say loosen the belt, your mouth, your attitude, you're willing to not submit, right? You're willing right, to, right. to sit in front of your friends and family and say, I love you. I love you through sickness. I love you. Through, but when you get a cold, she talking about go to hell. Well, uh, I, I, I'll be with you when you're rich or for poor. But when you lose your job, she talking about you ain't nothing. Um, uh, I, I'll be there for you. Went through the good times and the bad times, baby. I, I did something bad. Get out my face. Get out. You ain't this. You ain't that. Loose lips sink ships. We just talked about loose lips. And women out here are badgering and beating their husbands to death. And that's why you see so many men out here in couples. And you see them, you're like, oh, she's with an older guy. No, they're the same age. She's just wearing him out. <laughs> he looks like he's 70 and she looks like she's 40 because he she has a perspective for him. He, she, has, she has this thing for him. I want this. I want this. I want you to do this. I want you to work hard. And I guarantee he's in that baby. And let me touch you for a little bit. No, it don't take all that. Go to bed. Uh oh. There you go. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. So, you know, go to bed. I'm tired. My head hurt. Don't touch me. Don't touch my breast. Uh -huh.
don't want to. Oh my God, that's all you think about. Oh, leave me alone. Then as soon as he go to work the next day in that nice shirt and tie, after he just got that haircut or his dress peeing back, he gonna go to the tra- he gonna go to, the, to he gonna be at the copy machine, and that woman gonna pass by the first time. She gonna be like, hey, and he gonna be like, no, I'm married. Chill out. The second time, hey, handsome. Oh, that's a new suit. Oh, she. He gonna say, no, I'm married. In his head, that second time, he's gonna say, she noticed me. Mm-hmm. Then he's gonna be sitting at his desk. Oh, I got your paperwork. It was on the on the it was on the printer, and she had the paperwork in her hand, grazed his hand. Oh, I feel some some type of attraction to this woman. Then next thing you know, they're shaking sheets. You because, forgot one because he's full of something that his wife did not take from him before he left the establishment. It's it's hard to be a king at your at your castle when all the guards. Are, are 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 getting more than you getting? The servants are getting more than you're getting at your own castle. The fan, and when I say servants, I mean the family members, the the home girls, the trips. You go take a three day trip to Las Vegas with your girls, but you ain't had a getaway with your man in three years. Listen, am I preaching, or should I just go ahead and call? No, them? you are preaching, and we look. Look, we're gonna have to write that down because first we got to figure out. Well, we know the women have the loose lips. But we got to figure out why the family is more important mm-hmm. and, and why we letting our husbands um, leave out the house with something that we could have uh, gotten out of him, you know, but it was a part that you miss. Don't let the let don't let the copy girl say, mm, you smell good. Mm. They got to go to the bathroom right then and there. Right there. There's no there's nothing else. That's it. She tell him she, he smell good and. And then he looked to the left. All right, it's over. And guess what? And guess what? She's wearing. He's wearing the cologne that you bought him three years ago. And, and she's attracted to something that you did for him three years ago. Watch this here. Especially, let me tell you, man. If you're looking for some cologne out there, listen. Don't put on no Sauvage. <laughs> that Sauvage I have them running up through the dough. They're they're tear the dough down. Don't wear that. But I'm saying, if you're wearing something that smells as good as Sauvage, and you're around these women and your wife has not depleted you of all resources before you leave that house. The the thing to do is just put your dial soap on and go <laughs> and go to work. <laughs> don't, don't try to, cause what's going to happen is they're going to keep pulling you in. They're going to keep pulling you in. They're going to keep pulling you in. The next thing you know, Hey, where's black man up here? He not it. He didn't come to work today. He took a day off. Where he at? Wait a minute. Where's Sharice at? She took a day off today too. Oh, okay. Shade and they're shaking sheets. And the next thing you know, they at work giving each other the eye, and then the dude like, uh, because you know when a man come down, it's like a high for a man. When he go cheat, he'll come down, then he'll realize, you know what, man, I shouldn't have done that. I mean, I shouldn't have done that to my wife. Damn. But she wouldn't do nothing for me. Now I got to figure out how to tell her. I can lose my family because my wife wouldn't do nothing for me. I could, I got now. I got to go in here and admit that I've been a, a treacherous man. And see, that's the problem, though. People be like, "Oh, the man did this." This, I'm like, first of all, I'm gonna look at the wife. What, what didn't you do? What, po- what did you do to provoke this event to happen? Right, right. What but did what, you do? But oh, nobody right. asked those questions. Oh, he did so wrong. Really? So what? Do, what didn't she do? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I, I've seen it. I've heard it. I'm like. Pfft. I know people who are not together now because of that. Yep. yep. Now, yep, yep. people are like, well, what if yours ever? I said, he he don't have no reason to. I said, I'll take care of that. Okay. I, I, you, you, why? And, and I will put a little asterisk there. If, <laughs> if it ever happened, I will say, thank you for telling me what didn't I do? What did I do to send you out there like that? And I will hope my husband or any will be honest. Husbands, y'all gotta be honest. Why you did what you did and provoke that? Don't just say, "Oh, I'm so bad and I'm sorry." No. Well, you didn't do X, Y, and Z. You sent me out there like that. I wanted more of X, A, B, C, D. Yeah. Be honest. But nobody wants to communicate. Everybody just going through their little motions and posting for social media, happy go lucky family, and your stuff all screwed up. Yep. yep. So listen, guys. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Um. um we're going to have to drop this link in the chat because what was it? Uh, I can't remember the his name, but we've got to have him come up. Oh, look at here. That Kevin advised on uh, what kind of cologne we're wearing. I'm telling you, y'all, that a good smelling man is all it takes. That's it. A weak woman. And if he's not, and if he doesn't have his mind in the right place, 
It may be a bad day or a good day, however you say it, but we got to be better than that. But I want to get to the women, though. I want to, because I think, I think we kind of covered pretty much the major complaints on each side, right? Right. But and and now we need to figure out because obviously. Uh, uh, six, six years, years nine, nine years, years and 26, 26 years. years so, so we're defying, we're defying that. that but black, black man you, you talked, talked about, about it you a man, man. I, need I need to know, to know from women, women and what, and we, what can we can do about, about it. it why, why are our are mouths, mouths so slick so and loose, loose. now guys listen, listen even, even if you're if not married and you're, and you're looking, looking for a wife you should definitely be looking for a friend in her and then you definitely should be on your purpose and you should how can, How can I say, I say this? this? Make, Make sure, sure she fits, fits what you need, but don't be looking for perfection because we're not perfect. We haven't all gotten there yet. We're all still growing and we have to grow together to become one. I'm my my husband's wife. I can't be black man's wife, you know, and black man can't be my husband. So right. understand this. This is a process, but you got to get there. You got to get there. Can I address the control thing? Because I didn't address that one. There's oh, okay. A, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm going to make it short. I'm going to make it short. Come here, members. Come here, members. Have a seat. Let me put my preacher's voice on real quick. Listen to me. There's a difference between being controlling and taking control. Let me let me say it again. There's a difference between being controlling and taking control. Most women say you're being controlling, but a man is taking control. When your mouth exceeds your femininity, that means a man has to come in and take control. When you talk to your kids, like you talk to girls on the street, the, your man has to come take control. So he's not being controlling. He's taking control. Amen, church. He's, Amen. So, so these women out here keep saying, oh, these men are controlling. Oh, no, no, no. Men see something. See, men are visual. Men see things that you may not see. And like Bethany said, those heels had to go. Like unsolicited security ball said, that skirt had to go because he knows what men look at and his prize is not going to be the vision of other men. So he wants to have his wife conduct herself in a way that she doesn't have to be getting that type of attention because what our women do, they dress like a mess to impress, but when a man look up her dress, now she's upset. She's upset. She's mad. Well, what, I don't know what you up on me for. What you looking at me like that for? You can stop looking under my skirt, but you invited the energy. You invited the man to look under your dress, and you're married. The bed is blessed and defiled under the Lord. That means what you and your husband do, your husband should see those things, not everybody else out on the street. I, I'm, I, I'm the, the doors of the church is open. Uh, <laughs> but listen, that doesn't completely explain. Well, that explains the control. It does. And like I said, though, it's for some reason the women are not having this confidence or trust in the men that they're marrying. Mm -hmm. And I don't know. We got to get to what that is. Because, because listen, for my husband to tell me, to sit me down and say, this is why this is this way, I believed him. And I, I trusted what he said. You understand what I mean? It was no pushback. I didn't have to have a skirt. I much rather had the husband than the skirt. Come on. You know, you know, I did now, but you know, there could have been some other things that we disagreed on and I needed him to hear me on that. I still don't think that I, I got loose lip with him. He's never said that to me. I've, I've been kind of cautious on how I speak to my husband. <laughs> I want to be daring and daring. I don't want to be like crazy woman. Or he would so, check that. Yeah. You would check that. He would check it. He would check it. <laughs> Some domestic, domestic discipline. But anyway, just kidding. But the other thing is this, though. Um, something I'm hear to, hearing in these modern times and uh, with the younger the younger group, a mm -hmm. lot of men, and I'm starting with the men because men are leaders, they talking to the young ladies like this. They say, um, come on, bro. What's up with you? You know, there's no endearing compliments or conversations. You can't tell what's going on. I don't know if I like you or I don't because there's nothing there. Yes, sir. Um, you know why the men are cheating, uh, are talking to the women like that? Well, yeah, I know what you're getting ready to say, but we got to figure out how to... <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> Go ahead. I can tell you why. Tell me why. Because, because security boss, you look so lovely tonight. You look like you're about to go to a movie premiere with your husband tonight. You look so wonderful. Thank and you. So, and so looking at you, and Bethany, you are amazing as well. So looking at you guys tonight, and I'm saying to myself, I would never, and TJ, you know, her, she got her profile picture. She knows she's cute. That's why she don't cam up. But my thing is this. <laughs> My my thing is this. If I walked up to you, unsolicited security boss, there is no way possible I can say, what up, bruh? 
because your right. because your aura gives off that 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 feminine grace, that feminine that that feminine aura comes out of you even when you speak. The room sits still, right? Bethany, when she walks in the room and she's going to say, you know what? Hey, guys, how are you guys doing today? Dudes are going to fix their clothes and adjust themselves because they're going to respect Bethany. Let me go celebrity-wise before I go to TJ. TJ will walk in the room and you'll respect TJ because she gives off that feminine aura that will not allow you to say those things to her because she has a shield over her called femininity. Watch this. Michelle Obama... You will not go to Michelle Obama and say, what's up, Michelle? What up, your homie? No, you're going to put your suit on. If Michelle walked in the room, every man in there would adjust themselves and fix their clothes and say, whoa, whoa, whoa. Before you even approach that woman, you got to be right. Wait a minute. Oh, wait a minute. And so when you got women that are acting like what they want to be with, then that's when it comes in. What's up, bro? Because then the men become confused. Wait a minute. Did I marry did I marry Sheila or did I marry Sean? I married Sheila, but now she's Sean. But was she always Sean or was she always Sheila? Now the men are confused. And now they're going to bed with their homeboy. And they're saying, what up, homie? Good morning, bro. What's going on with you? Because their women are masculine. They, they're they Cleo from, from, from set it off. They're masculine. They wear their hair masculine. They dress masculine. They walk around in, 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 in men's tennis shoes and men's clothes and men's jerseys. And they, they tie their hair back and pin it back like they're men and they walk around so masculine. And they talk and cursing every other word. And you're going to be like, oh, that's my homie right there. That's my homeboy. But when you have a woman that's full of grace... And 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 her presence fills a room. Unsolicited boss walked in, and she even when she greets the audience, she walked in hi. And when that <laughs> smile hit the airwaves, it, it it grasped your attention, right? The angels come and peek over the balconies of heaven when she oh, speaks. Wow. I feel right? like I need to sing a song. God, yeah, come on, God. come on, come on. And, and, and Beth, did you hear Bethany how much conviction she has for her man when she says, "Listen, the heels had to go. My husband had to check me, and I'm okay with it." But now you got women saying, "My daddy did." Uh oh. You don't tell Ooh, me they nothing. do say that. Oh my God, you are my, so right. Oh, but we gotta turn this around. How do we fix this? Because these women need to be married. These men, we have good men. Listen, I, I was like, you know, going streaming, listening to some other things last night, and I came up on a um a live, and it was just I almost cried because the way that women, a black woman, and y'all all probably know what I'm talking about because we, we all kind of like the same things, I believe. It was so terrible to hear a young lady talk about black men on that live that I just couldn't. It was a black woman too. I could not believe it. You know, it was so devastating to hear a grown black woman to say this about black men. Not all black men are good. I get that. Not all people are good. This is how I see it. I don't see it black or white. I really don't. There are bad people in the world, black and white. Y'all know that and Asian and everything else. But to hear her say that I'm just getting tired, tired of the black man and all these those things they say about us and this and this. And this. oh, it just got so bad. It got so bad. Y'all couldn't look at it. I mean, I, this woman just hurt my heart because I'm thinking the way she talked about the black man, I'm thinking, I hope that she don't ever need one anywhere because if they saw this, they may leave her somewhere vulnerable and, and hurt because it was awful. And it's just amazing to hear stuff like that from a black woman, because even if another race is your preference to talk about your own people that way, I mean, as a general you know, as, as as a whole, I'm just tired of them. You know, I knew it was a lot of hurt and pain going on there, but it was just awful to hear. So I'm just saying to you all, I think the key to this is to be married. But I do see that the women are not ready. I see that the men are not ready. The men are not leaders, y'all. We got to make them leaders. So we got to make them understand they do have the ability to do so. What does that say? You know, I can't this, see that, this, right? this, No, this is a keyboard to my key. To, to oh, always, okay. uh, this is analogy. What okay. we need to, on this keyboard, guys, let me do another infomercial here. On this keyboard, this is a very nice wireless keyboard that I have here for I do my shows with. There's three buttons on here that all women need to do. And they need to go to their mom's house with this keyboard. And they need to hit three little tabs on this keyboard. Control, Alt, Delete. <laughs> delete your toxic mama. Delete your toxic aunties. Delete your toxic uncles. The men, delete your toxic uncles and tell you to go out and sleep with five, six, seven, eight women a month. And they still ain't married and they lost all their teeth and they smell like brutes. Go control, alt, delete. Control, alt, delete. The women out here, 
that are 50 years old, don't have no teeth in their mouth, wearing dentures Stop everywhere, it. living with their mamas cooped Stop. up, ain't got no, ain't got nothing, ain't going nowhere, ain't trying to be nothing, won't go to church, won't go, ain't got no man, but trying to tell you how to do for your man. Control Alt delete. I, can somebody put it in the in the chat in case somebody could forget, forget it? it. Control, yeah, we need to, we need to live by alt, that. Delete. Matter of fact, get your t shirt made. Control alt delete. Control alt delete those coworkers at work that are trying to when you're trying to do good but they're trying to do bad. Control alt delete. That's my sermon tonight. Control alt delete all these people. They just ridiculous people. And they the men are. can't lead. The men they can't are. lead. Yeah, the men can't lead because they got uncles that were in their ear. And I even had it. My uncle used to tell me the measure of a man is how many of them you can. Sleep. Late. You need to knock them down. When you get them, knock them all down. Oh I'm my 13, God. I'm 13 years old. He tells me, Hey, uh, nephew, yeah, what's up, uh, How many you hit this year, boy? Oh. I, I ain't hit nothing. What you hit what? The women, boy, you know. I said, No, I ain't hit none. Oh, boy, you may not, you may need to make an announcement, boy. You may be on the other side. You may be gay. Wow. Wow. Yes. Uh, JR Wisdom. Thank you for the super chat. Come on. Come on, man. Great I, show. Thank you, JR. Yeah. So, Miss PJ, you've been listening to all of this. And you know what? You were on the panel last night. I was praying for you because I, I, I felt the emotion coming out the TV. I didn't know what you were going to do. Um, <laughs> I'm glad you held it together. But I had to, like, really bow out. I saw you running. I, I had to go because I... <laughs> It was what, awful. The young lady did at? say she at? did say something about abort black babies, and it was awful to hear. Yeah, so yeah. it was yeah, so awful, y'all. Um, but exit. you know what? <laughs> I must say that my heart kind of went out to the young lady a little bit because you must be real hurt in order to say abort anything, first of all, but yeah. to say a black baby and then go on to say, I've had two successful relationships with black men, but I'm with white men now, and they made me. One of them had me make a, a what have a um, what you call it, a miscarry because he attacked me or something of that nature. I'm thinking, my God, am I confused or am I just not seeing this right? But see, so, but the, the, ooh, one more thing. I had this. already abandoned but, ship by TJ that time. Was just, oh, go, go ahead, go ahead. <laughs> go ahead go, you know what? One more thing, women. I want you to do something. For, this is for the crazy black women, the women that feel like I don't want no black man. I just want to go here to the white man because it makes me feel better, make me want to show off the white man. Let me tell you what happens in that situation. I, I want to lead you guys on another commercial here. I want you to guys to go to the ID channel and I want you to watch the ID channel on a 24 hour marathon. And I want you to see how many white men take their black wives out onto the ocean to look at the whales. And while they're watching the whales, they get hit across the head with a center block and they tie the chain around their legs and throw them down in the ocean and let them drop down to the bottom. The white men are not playing. They're going to put you in an oil barrel at their job. They're going to put you in a jacket. Okay, come on. Your <laughs> come on. The white men are not playing with you. I'm going to tell you that now. So you think you think you think you think they're going over there with the loose lips? No. Oh, oh no. I'm no. sorry. I'm sorry. So, Billy. so listen, I, 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 you know what? I just don't think it's a problem of race. I think we got an issue. I think she had an issue. Um, but I do think there are good white men and good black men. And if you whatever your preference is, it, it doesn't mm -hmm. really matter. You still right. have to be right within yourself. And she wasn't. She was not. Miss TJ. Ma'am. What do you? I I saw you running last night. So what what you what do you have to add to this? We're here defying, and you two have been married going on three years. But we're defying yeah. ne defying negative marriage stereotypes. So what would you add to this conversation, or even about last night that young lady who really needed something dear to happen? Well, like I said, I by by the time that I can't you know, hear you. you did, oh, can you can't hear I, me? I can hear. Oh. Lord, no, y'all, I'm still struggle streaming. I don't hear her at all. Bethany, your husband's want you. He's behind you. Can you hear me? Go see what that man want. Black man, <laughs> so, can you hear black me? Black man, go ahead. And I hate to do this, but can you translate? Uh, go ahead and um, yeah, TJ, go ahead and say what you're saying. And then you just kind of sum it up for me. Because for some reason, I can't hear her. I don't know. You want me to come out and come back in? Here today? I'm not sure. You want me to go out and come back in? Um, no, what you can do is she said she can't hear you at all. So everybody can hear you, but unsolicited security boss. So if you, whatever you say, I, well, after you say it, I'll just tell her what you said. <laughs> We're really okay. making it happen today. <laughs> yeah, go ahead. Okay. Sign language. Okay. Um, well, you know, I, I had, I had left by the time it got really crazy. So I didn't hear all of that. And I think it's just as well. Um, but I just want to say, you know, I guess of, of the three of you, I'm the newlywed on the block. And um, I'm 50, I'm a 54, but you know, I want to say, give some grace to the single women. Our reason why I say that is because 
when I was a single woman with hanging with my married friends, a lot of the things that would come out of my mouth was just based on complete ignorance, mm. you know, about, you know, why well, I have to check with my husband. What do you mean check with your husband? But again, out of ignorance, you know, I did not understand. <laughs> I'm not going to say understand. I didn't appreciate what it really meant to be in not just a marriage, but a covenant. And so a lot of times they were wise with doing what they were supposed to do. But I thought I, I was one of those ignorant young women say, oh, he's trying to control you. Well, no, he's not trying to control you. He's the head. So you are supposed to check with him first. And if he's not OK with it, he's not OK with it. So uh, I had to learn to give, uh, I'm giving young people, young single women grace because I needed it. Huh? No, keep going. Um, okay. Now far, I never let my husband leave full. I'm just gonna leave it right there. Uh, I, did, I, I, I deny him nothing. Um, and I deny him nothing. And I make it a point because um, I do know what it's like out there. I, you know, I let him know how sexy he is, how, you know, I notice everything about him, you know, his haircut, his smell good. I notice everything about him. I do his pal pedicure. I do the pedicure, what's and ever. I do because I'm going to make sure uh, I am his peace and he is my strength. My God, I just started shouting. Uh, let, let me translate. Let me translate. Can I translate? Okay. <laughs> she said, can you hear me, security boss? Yes, I can. She said when she was growing up, she had nothing but ignorance. She just spoke ignorance, just spat it out ignorance. She said, but now, because I can't see it how eloquent she said it, but she said <laughs> now that she's she's her husband's piece. She makes sure he smells good and makes sure she does his manicure and his pedicure and takes care of him and loves on him like no other. Hey, I'm yes. I, I, come on. And so ladies, listen, let me have a small commercial here. Guys, if you have your pen and paper, if you can take your <laughs> pen and paper out, listen, and take notes and make sure you read over these before you go into your test tomorrow, which will be your husband tomorrow morning. Amen, everybody. Okay. Amen. But, so she said, <laughs> That she that she's a bit in a better place now. That she's his peace, and that's the word. That's the that's the word that men just love. They want peace, femininity. They want a woman that that wants a man to lead them, but but they also want the woman to take control. Sometimes she, TJ, am I am I am I translating okay here? You you did very well. I'm just going to clarify one clarification: uh -huh. is the ignorance. What? I was saying as it relates to how I would talk to my, uh, my married friends somehow that they were being controlled by their husbands and they were not being controlled by their husband. They were doing what they were supposed to do, uh, yielding toward their husband. But when you are single. What she's saying is that, or what yeah. we all well, are trying to say is that when you <laughs> become in one with uh -huh. someone, you know exactly what they need. And if it's peace that they need a cooperation, what you need, he doesn't have to say anything. She knows when to supply it. And that is becoming one. You already know. And that's what we got to get. If we're not there, married couples, if you're not there, we got to communicate this. You got to, you got to ask for this. You got to work on this daily. Did you hear because you, you huh? Did you hear what she just said? Oh, me? No, no. Did you hear what TJ just said? No. She said she used to tell her friends before she was married, the ones that were doing the right thing, she used to talk against their marriages. Ooh, that's deep. Wow. So let's 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 get into that. Okay, black man, you got to translate this. I hate this because TJ is going in and out over here on my end. TJ, hear this, if you can hear me. Um, why do you think you talked against their marriages or what the things they did within it? Why did you do that? Well, well, that's the thing. I didn't know I was speaking against their marriages. I thought that, you know, I thought that the, the men were trying to control them and take over the one, the person that they were and controlling their movements. Well, that was ignorance because it wasn't a sense of control. It, they were being 
uh, they were submitting to their husband under the, the husband's authority as they should. Mm. But it, out of ignorance, I didn't fully understand or appreciate that. So when I would want to, I will give an example. Right. I, um, I, I'll just say my friend, <laughs> we were going to, I, I was in the military at the time and we were going to work out. I invited this her to work out with me and she says, well, let me check with so-and-so my husband to make sure he'll, you know, watch the kids. I'm like, what do you mean check with him? He don't check with you when he goes to uh, play golf. I was completely out of line, wow. you know, but that was the mentality that I had, you know, why do you have to check with him? He doesn't have to check with you. So that's the kind of thing that I'm talking about. Um, but she was doing what she was supposed to do. And I didn't get that or I didn't appreciate it um, because I definitely understand it now and will grow somebody real. If they try to tell me that about my husband, it's going to be a situation. Can I say something to that security boss? Okay. Okay. Yes, definitely. It's, it's funny you said that, TJ, because when women say, well, he don't have to check with you. In my marriage, my husband is never asking my permission to do anything. He still takes our schedule into consideration. Mm-hmm. I remember we had just had our second uh, son and he may have been six months old, whatever, maybe almost a year. But he was, it was all before the pandemic and he wanted to shoot pool with one of his best friends. Hey, he called me. He, you know, he want to go shoot pool this weekend. I'm like, that's fine. And he always went after we had put the kids down. So it may have been eight o'clock. Not a problem. But he wasn't asking my permission. But he, it is a, it is nice when a husband can kind of check in like, hey, are you good? Do you need anything? Do you need to go somewhere? Do you need to? Thank you. Thank you for considering me as your wife. Because this, this oneness, you know, exactly. yes, you can you can go shoot pool, not a biggie. He won't trip if I, if I want to go to happy hour. Nah, I used to complain saying my little getting out never worked because I would have to cancel if he had to go to work because I'm at home with the kids. But it's never a tip for Tad. It's like, yeah, I'm cool. And I think as a wife, him going to work or having to go out of town for work, sometimes that's my little, that's my little uh, freedom, I say, my little quiet time. So when people say, oh, you don't need to be all up under your man, your man don't need to be up all under you, it's like, no, it works out. It works out. It's never a, you know, asking permission. As a wife, I still ask, like, hey, this and this is coming up. You mind if I go? You mind? Okay, let's check our schedule. Let's make sure, you know, I can get the boys or whatever. So, especially as a parent, I think kids' schedules, who can who can watch, are you free? That all has to come into play in, in a marriage and just a relationship. And, and, and absolutely, absolutely, I think it's, it's just, just not appreciating or not fully understanding and just speaking out of ignorance, especially being that I did not grow up seeing that type of dynamic because my parents were not married. You know, my grandparents were married, but you know, they, you know, we're talking about, they were very, very senior. So I didn't see a lot of the, the things that the dynamic between husband and wife. So, you know, and not growing up with it, you just, you, you, you think, you know, something you don't, but now, having grown into the things that I know now, um, that I've grown in the past, you know, 10 years or so, I'm glad that it, it, I got my mind right because I wouldn't be married now and I would not be not just married, but successfully married and appreciating Mm -hmm. and valuing my role and knowing what Mm -hmm. my role is and, um, thriving in it, quite frankly. So, so listen, um, something that I thought about, and, and that's very real. So, hell, how are you? So much greatness and all in one place. Thank you for being here. So, listen, guys, something I thought about, I've been thinking about it because I'm just trying to figure out what makes a good marriage relationship. What does the dynamic have to be? And I've come up with something that's very simple, and I want to hear what you all think about it. I think in order to um, husbands to meet your wife and vice versa, um, they need to be kind. We need kind people. Only kind people need to be married. 
Oh. It takes a certain amount of kindness to allow someone into your life to become yes. one with somebody to sacrifice. If you are mean, you know, halation, you know, whatever, right. exactly. devil, you know, about drama, yep. you don't need to be married. You don't have it in you. First step is to be kind. We have to be kind people. We got to be sacrificial. You have to be. It's just, it's just, I'm because I'm hearing, I'm hearing, um, I was thinking about what black man was say, saying earlier about how uh, you, you know, the wife might speak to the husband, be like, what you want? What would make me say what I want to my husband? He's, a, <laughs> he, he's like, you know, he's like Come a on. flyer. He's there when nobody else is there. Come on. You know, no matter, no matter what you go through, he'll be yeah, right. So I'm just trying to figure out what would make me so angry with them. What would make me so mad at them that I have to speak down to them or or not want to be around them? What what is that? And I'm saying we got to be kind to each other. And I do know um, that some past hurts and traumas may keep us from doing that. But guys, listen, we got to check that before we get to the altar, because. Again, red flag. If your woman doesn't have the ability to be kind or you marrying a mean man, don't, don't it's not you just setting yourself up for uh, some years of trouble and probably not a successful marriage. I mean, I do know people can change. Somebody said that earlier. People can change and they also right. can grow because um, no, not everybody is socially mature at the same mm -hmm. time. I get that. I that's, agree with that's that. a real thing. Let but me, kindness has to be the first thing of the uh, the, the number one ingredient. I, I want to hear what y'all think. If y'all think it's it, something else, y'all let me know. But it seems okay, like I, kindness yeah. is the first thing we need to look for. And, and you know what the problem is? The problem is this. We haven't sermonically d d uh, disconnected ourselves from the umbilical cord of the toxicity that created us. So so what, what that means is if mama grew up cussing out men and talking to men in any kind, can I use my preacher voice again? If mama start cussing out men and beating up men and shooting at men and wrestling with men and talking to men, every, every other word she cursing, and you saw that growing up, and then you grow up and you get into your own marriage, most women don't understand that there is a generational curse that lives in them. And mm -hmm. the reason that it stays around is because you still have that umbilical cord to your mama. You and your, you go over to your mama house and y'all laugh and y'all kiki and y'all have a good time, but nobody's discussing what happened when you were seven. And that little girl is still living in you. That little mean girl that didn't get what she needed from her mama is still living in you. And now it manifests itself that what you want, that's a seven-year-old girl saying, I didn't get the attention what the hell you need it for. If, if, if we still connected to our toxic mamas, we still connected to the toxicity Ooh. from our parents that said, hey, listen, you don't need no man. Go to school, go to college, be independent and do your own thing. Do your wow. own thing. You don't have to listen to no man. I, the other night, I was on a platform the other night, my God, about three weeks ago, I want to say the other three weeks ago, and I heard a woman say, you don't have to listen to a preacher. You don't have to listen to a man. You don't have to listen to your uncles. You don't have to listen to no man. You listen to yourself. And when you listen to yourself, women, you'll be by yourself. yourself. This is true. I, I'm, I'm, I'm going to stop right there. Uncle Stu, how are you, sir? I am doing well. I ain't going to be Good, good. And Tommy, Tommy B, how are you? We're going to get Uncle Stu first, and Tommy, we're going to come to you. Doing? Uncle Stu. Listen, what do you think about this? Number one ingredient, ingredient, kindness. And also, I do want to hear, because uh, I think you are recently married, too. So I mm -hmm. want to hear from you uh, how you defy the negative stereotypes of within marriage or that people, you know, complain about all the time. Because, you you know, you recently married, so you did it recently. I'm the, I think I'm the longest here, so I want to hear what you have to say about it. And thank you for being here. No problem. I... I I will say two things. Um, yes, prior to me being married, I've seen the toxicity of many I women. Hear you. you can't hear me. Can you hear me? Hold, hold on. I'm going to try something, uh, if you don't mind. So, uh, uh, can y'all hear me now? No, oh, I'm asking hear. for you to try something, because for some reason, every uh, time they come in. So, uh, hold on a second. All right, can go you ahead. Can you hear me now? All right, yes, can you hear me? You to try something, because for some reason. Okay. Uh, very quickly, when I was out there, there was a whole lot of toxicity. Can y'all hear me? Yeah, yeah. yeah he's saying there's a whole lot of toxicity. Go ahead. I'm going to go ahead and translate for him. Okay, no, go ahead. <laughs> Wait, uh, oh, I'm speaking in tongues, so I need an interpreter. I got it. <laughs> 
But oh, I will yeah. say that there was there's an extreme amount of toxicity out there. So I don't want to repeat what was already stated, but I think until we really abort the past mission, because not only are we connected to the mother, but we're also connected to the lie. And until we disconnect from the lie, we cannot fly. And I think we have been well too connected to the lie. And I think what you're hearing from men today is they're speaking the truth of what we were saying back in 1995. So all we have to learn to do now uh -huh. for my marriage today is learn how to A, lead true. I will tell anybody, I'm lucky. And I've always told mine, if you leave me, I'm leaving USA. And she understood that because I got a rarity. I'm sorry, it's a rarity. A woman that is not living in the pains of her past relationships, not living in the pains of past, fail whatever happened in her past. She is living in her total femininity. She is living in her total truth. And she is loving what she has right now. So I couldn't tell you how to fix this thing, but she loves the fact that she ain't got to pay no bills. She loves the fact that when she go to work, all her money is hers. She loves the fact that I can lead, provide, and guide both mentally, spiritually, everything. She always used to ask me in the beginning, why in the world are you single? I said, if I wanted to be an F boy, I can do that. But I wanted to be a husband again. So it locked all that down because in her, I found a wife, not a knife. Excuse me. Can I, can I say something real quick? Yes. I know security boss can't hear me, but I'm I can hear say you now. I can hear you now. Oh, oh, you can't? Okay, great. Yeah, but I can't hear Stu, but I can hear oh, you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it's, sad. it's sad. Go ahead. I, I want to say this real quick and drop off and forgive me for not being on camera. I've been, you know, I'm moving and, you know, Mr. Randolph is on the road. So again, being the house manager, I'm packing up and moving and everything. So make sure the transition is, is smooth when he gets home. Um, but to be, you absolutely be kind. I think one of the things to what uh, Uncle Stu said, we... I'll, I'll just say women because I'm a woman. We really have to, if we think, if we believe that we want to be married, no matter what we've gone through, we've got to do the work to, to get ourselves fixed first, emotionally, spiritually, you know, mentally, so we can be receptive to a husband. So we can give of ourselves and not question us giving of ourselves because a lot of times women won't do that because they're still so hurt and not have not resolved those hurts. So they can't yield. They won't yield. Mm. So that means you're not, you're not healed if you won't yield. So in order to do that, you got to go ahead and peel that off. Trust yourself again. I get it. I, I shared that, you know, I had an abusive relationship. I was scared, but I did it anyway. Mm. And, I'm, and, I'm, and I'm glad that I did because, I, you know, I wouldn't I missed would have missed the man of my dreams. But I'm kind to him. Yes. I'm considerate yes. to him. Yes. I anticipate his needs before he can ask. Yeah. I, I hear me again for the people in the back. I anticipate his needs. Come on. I anticipate. His wants. My husband has said many times, I'm a simple man and he is. He's a truck driver. But I anticipate and I do for him what I know he wouldn't do for himself. Mm. That's a good one. That's a real good one right there. You better write that one down, black man. Write that I one do, down. I do for him what I know he wouldn't do for himself. I'm not. A, the first time he ever had a pedicure is with me. <laughs> My husband, you know, I'm great. You know, my husband was married for 20 years before we met and it didn't work out. So he mm -hmm. like Uncle Stu, he wanted to be married again. And he, you know, he wanted to be married again. He didn't want to just be out there. 
but a lot of the things that, you know, he never had a pedicure before, but I said, you need that. You deserve that. I do things for him because he's worth it. And because I continually do, he continually does. It's a reciprocity. And again, like I said before, I, we've never had the conversation about me, me submitting to him. It just happened. And it just happened because he was doing what he was called to do. And I followed without question and without question for a woman who had been single for 18 years. <laughs> okay. So that's what it is, ladies. You know, don't not just you do what he asks, but that's that's cute. But anticipate with him without him asking. That's even better. So that, that's better. all I got. That's all I got. Y'all have a good night. <laughs> well, thank you. Thank you for coming here. And we got to get to these young ladies because they need to know that it's much better on this side. Um, what they're doing is not working. That's why they're complaining. We got to teach people how to be kind, though. I don't. We got to get back to it. I don't. I don't understand the. It's some mean women out there. I'm telling you. I mean, they even mean to us. Oh, well, I'm gonna say yes. I can't speak for y'all. They mean to yes. women is what I'm trying to say. Mean to me as a woman. So yeah. we got to figure out. Mm -hmm. You know, despite well, the real, men, they mean as fire anyway. There's so. real quick one thing. To, one, you know, a uh, shameless plug. My 27 year old daughter and her husband, they just started a channel. And they're going to be talking to the youngins about if you want to be married. That's so they just started the channel. We'll be talking about it on Saturday. But yeah, it's one thing to hear from an old head. But you hear from somebody in your own age group where they talk about the benefits of marriage and they have a great time. So y'all, thank, thank you. Thank you. Y'all have a good one. You too. All All right. Right. I'm not going to be on here long. Yeah, but I'm going to do my own shameless plug. Tomorrow we're having... On my platform, we're gonna have oh, real talk, real convers real conversations. In other words, for this platform, I want to hear from women why you're not able to communicate with your man or with men in general. Because on my platform, I got too many single men that want to be married just like me. So we got to get the conversation started in a whole nother direction. So that's my little shameless plug. I'm getting ready to get off of here because mine just got home and I'm ready to eat. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so may the peace and blessing of God be with all of y'all. Thank you. Yes. Love you, Uncle Stu. Uh, I love you too, sir. Jedi, how are you? I'm doing good. I'm blessed. How you guys doing? doing I'm good. Tommy doing good. Tommy Bear. We want to hear what you have to say, sir. You be preaching over there sometime. <laughs> um, so it's, I think it's kind of a multiple uh, ways to look at this situation. Um, one of the problems that I've had as far as dating is I tell a lot of people that, um, let me know if I'm low. Um, when, when I'm single, as far as like by myself, like I'm at peace, I'm happy, this, that, and the other. And I, and I tell a lot of women that I date, and even like uh, like my sister and them, like if someone comes in my space, I don't even ask you to raise that. Just keep it there. And that might be something I have to change. I don't know. Because for me, once that starts to dip, then you got to go. Because I feel like I'm super simple. I don't ask for much. I'm, I, I go to uh, IHOP and I'm just as happy as somebody going to go get a steak. Like I'm super simple. Um, but you know, you have, you have a lot of people, uh, like what a black man was talking about with, with the, uh, the toxic relationships, a lot of people don't even understand that they're kind of addicted to that type of stuff because mm -hmm. when I'm normally in a relationship, that again. I, call it, I, I call it boring. And the reason why I call it boring is because I answer my phone. I answer my text messages. I come home. I don't come home at two o'clock and like all the drama stuff that you normally hear. I don't present those. Mm. And I've actually had times where people have felt that was boring. You know, it's not exciting. It's not that you know where you at. I've actually had somebody try to give me advice and ask me, why do you answer the phone all the time? I'm not about to play these games with people. I'm grown. Um, Thank you. Thank and you. So, you know, I grew up 
in a house where we ain't have uh, police at my house every day. You know, my mom and dad wasn't screaming and yelling. That's what I was used to. So when I'm in a relationship, that's what I'm used to. And I'm figuring out that a lot of these people out here that are single didn't come from that. And so they don't know that. And so when we end up getting together and it's peaceful like that, they almost look at it as boring. <laughs> and it's like, I, I, my daughter's a mom. I swear to God, she said it to me one time. And I said, I'm going to tell you to you like this. I can make this shit real interesting if you want me to. Like, that's no problem. If you, if you want that, I can do that. But that's that's not what I do. Um, And then another thing, too, is like the friends that they have, you know, They'll get on the phone and they friends is, oh, this dude did this, da, 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 da. And, oh yeah, my dude did this, da, da, da. and then they get to her turn and she ain't got them stories. Like it's it's little weird stuff like that, you know, that as far as men, you have to deal with with women out here because literally if you're doing quote unquote the right thing, it comes across as boring. So um I think that's that's one of the biggest problems. But I don't I don't I don't think men are generally walk around scared about uh gold diggers because most men ain't got the gold to dig it's just the reality of it you know a lot of these dudes and women are watching watching kevin samuels and he literally tells people they just don't listen he ain't talking to most of y'all like to get a high value most of y'all ain't henry's high earning not rich and most of y'all not even that that's just that's what the number i know everybody on youtube is a six-figure the stats say no y'all ain't Right. So even though he does give good advice that some of us can relate to, most of that don't even apply to you. You know, and the problem is a lot of people are listening to that thinking it applies to their life and it really don't. It just that don't they make the options you got. Sir and ma'am. So, so, hold on. so Can Tommy, I please let me say something to you. Oh yeah, oh. my bad. Oh, let me say a couple things first. Let me do this. Eugene Steele, thank you for the super chat. He said, I have watched so many CC talks about relationships and marriage, and I think you have gave the most details and most different perspective. Thank you, SB. Thank you, Mr. Steele. So much for that. But Tommy, I want to ask you uh, one question. Do you want to be married? Um, if, if I found the right woman, I'm not scared of it. I absolutely. So let me let me say this to you, because um, there's absolutely nothing wrong with being boring because I think that's what I described early on when I say me and my husband are together all the time and we don't really I describe that I think that's excellent actually but um what I didn't hear you say is that you had a vision or a plan for your life in the future that included a woman and I think you need to think like that make that plan so when you're entertaining women if they're not fitting into that plan don't waste your time but if you can see yourself with a particular woman doing those boring things you love to do 20 years from now, then you can and will be able to be married because then you're on your purpose. You just, that'll become part of your purpose for life. But just just dating and just uh, whatever happens and not really giving it a thought and, oh, as I get older, maybe I'll do this. And if the right one comes by, that'll never happen because you don't have a plan for her. You're not seeing that woman. You got to see that woman as whatever you want it to be so it can fit into that plan. And then when she comes, now I'm, I'm not talking about physically, exteriorly. I'm talking about your plan on how you want your life to be. Five years from now, I want to have a five bedroom house. I want to do this. I want to do that. And the woman I'm with needs to be this type of woman. She don't need to be that type of woman. She needs to be this, you know, whatever that plan is. So when these women come and you have these conversations, even discuss it or have communication about your plan. And if they don't fit, keep it moving. But if they do, then you know that's somebody that you can actually um, continue another conversation with or continue to date because you are the makings of that man. You're the leader. You have your kids. You, you're you boring. I mean, you know, you're not that person that needs to have this type of excitement. Now, what I've known of you, you you'll straighten somebody pretty quick, but I don't know about the kindness, but I kind of feel like you have that too. And you have an example, at least 30 years of a mother and father living in the same household being married. So. You actually got what you need. I just think you're not thinking about it that way. Um, yeah, I, I, I would married, agree with We that. haven't even talked about the benefits of marriage. But marriage, being married, covers you. A good marriage covers you, protects you. You know, it keeps you from so many different things. And I'm not even talking about the tax benefits yet, the, the, the worldly benefits. I'm just talking about emotionally. 
It is a place for someone like yourself to be vulnerable in time. But you need to come up with that plan because you are a person that, in my opinion now, I see you with a wife. I see you with a wife, okay? So come up with that plan. Think about that. Concentrate. I mean, be deep with it. Don't just be surface with it. You know, on a given day, what is this woman like? You know, is she a busybody? Does she talk a lot? Obviously, you don't want somebody in your life to talk a lot because you say you like, your, you know, you know, like I said, build a house big enough that you can be on the West Wing. She can be on the East Wing, you know, so you can have your space. But obviously, you don't like to go anywhere. You don't like a lot of people around well, you. No, no. When, when I say oh, boring, when I can't hear I, you. I Something happened. As far as like not doing nothing. When I say boring, I'm, I'm up. Oh. Say it again. Go ahead. No, no. When I say boring, I think. I'm talking as far as drama, like a lot of women. Oh no, I get it. I get what you're saying. Drama. But no, I I do trips and all. I I do all of that stuff. I'll go out and stuff. Um, I personally like solo. I can I can be introverted, but I've had women that you know when they want to go out, I ain't no problem. I mean, it it it's, it that that's all of that's not really issue. I'm talking about as far as like that that drama that like a lot of women have went through that. So much, and a lot of women look at that as love. You know, like. They they take that as love. So oh, he's doing this because it, it it gets weird. Like that that is weird. That's not that's not good. You don't want the police coming to your house. You don't nobody want that. No, I I see you being married. I just think you need to have a plan for it, and make sure she's your best friend, and then she can be around you. Yeah, absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. She can be around you. Definitely. So um. Jedi, what you got to add to this? Oh, no. I just want to say this is a good live stream uh, tonight and everything uh, with uh, Miss TJ and um, and uh, Miss Bethany there. Uh, it was a very good conversation. Um, Black man, how you doing? You... What's going on, little bro? <laughs> doing good. Doing good. Um, and listen, uh, this, this is something you said in the last uh, like, like 10, 15 minutes when you talked about as a woman being nice, right? This is exactly what I was saying on Monday. And we're going to talk about it tonight. Um, and it's in the thing that it's, I won't say it frustrates me, especially as a man of my youth, because like, you know, we can say in different generations, but as a young man, you're seeing this where uh, that word being you no know, conditioned where women saying you have the other girls around with Mitch TJ gave the example about when you're expressing, oh, let, let me go talk to my boyfriend or my husband about this, whatever. It's like, why you got to talk to him? And that simple thing of level of respect is that we lacked in our community. You know, and it is frustrates me because you're wondering why we're in the situation that we're in because the simple, you no, know, you no know, act of, you know, what do you want to call obedience or uh, love, whatever it might be. It's just that we think that is too much to ask is that I'm asking the world of you just to say, let me go, let me go talk to my, uh, my, uh, um, my spouse about this, whatever. And that's just the level of respect. And you're talking about what, like I said, you know, niceness is an act, kindness is who you are. And I said something as a woman, you know, when you have a presence of a true, you know, some feminine woman that that basically her spirit basically projects grace, talking about projecting grace amongst people, especially during high issues of conflict, whatever. And you don't have to say that much at all. Like I said, like the way you came in, how you started this live stream, I I, I can pick many examples from you, Miss Security Boss and Miss TJ, whatever, you know, and when you guys come, when you speak, you know, it's like there's a level of sense of like, you know what, everything's going to be all right. Everything's going to be all right. And that is a gift of a, uh, a powerful tool that God has blessed you, right? And a lot of people are forgetting, they're forgetting that because they're wondering why we're in the situation we are in our community, and especially in terms of children. You know, women, they tra transmit culture, right? And you understand the reflection of how they view men and women. As much as the father, you know, established morals and foundation, like she, you no, know, the woman, she projects, you no know, culture in terms of, okay, this is how you interact with people, how you, you know, deal with relationships and stuff. This is how, you know... You no, know, talking about manners and how you conduct yourself, whatever, around the household, respect amongst your parents, you know, parents, respecting levels of authority, simple as stuff as that. And yet we don't have that in our homes anymore. And then, and, and I say that that's also a part of men's side, you know, in terms of us not being, you no know, being equipped to be leaders to also to establish that foundation in the first place. So with that, she can even relax in her femininity, right? You know, because some of them, you know, they feel like they have no choice but to be aggressive and have this guard up. And hence, they're getting the situations that they're getting right now. So, but I just want to say, I just, I'm glad that, you know, uh, Miss Security about that you shared that story because I've seen this in my generation that um, that's continued, that spirit needs to be broken. And to, to you, Tommy, I want to speak that to you. Um, um, You know, I love you, bro. 
you know, I got love for you and everything like that. But also just making sure I'm, um, I just want to say thank you for just for your level of transparency is like uh, that you're sharing here, because especially when you say that Pokemon, you're boring and everything. Listen, and I can tell you, you know, you're older than me, but even then I get that too when I'm my age too, where it's like, listen, why am I calling when someone called me, I answer phone, why are you calling time? You're right. I'm not playing games. And then some of these girls are saying, oh, I like the chase. Okay. You can chase something else. Don't chase. I'm not chasing for you. Like, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm like, I know I'm 23 years, three years old, but still, just uh, this level of games, you need to stop playing. You know, you're wondering why, you know, you go, you go on the playground as, a, as an adult and now all of a sudden you walk out, you get bruises because it's not fit for you anymore. You outgrew that. And those people, we outgrew this game and relationships and stuff like and I'm, I'm just sick of it as men and women need to learn that. And my generation, that some of these games is basically going to lead you to the end game. Right. You know, the end game is basically where it's going to be game over for you. Where you're talking about, uh, well, I don't want to play. I don't want to be too needy, or I don't do the whole push. See if he actually gonna do it, whatever. Okay, you want to play some checkers? Go ahead. You know, then you deal with a childlike mindset of, a, of an individual, and you're wondering why some of these boys are not men. Because I say we don't play those games anymore. But Absolutely. Yeah, sorry. So listen, um, we've been here over two hours, y'all. And listen, I just want to say thank you to all of y'all because if y'all were here in the beginning. Security boss was struggle streaming like crazy. And throughout, the devil has definitely tried to keep us from communicating today. So what I think has happened is somebody has been blessed. I, I don't know who. Absolutely. But I would love to hear it. So if y'all, you know, in the end, tell me that this thing touched you and y'all are blessed and it's something y'all need to hear, please let me know. Because, listen, I'll y'all don't even know what's going over here on this end. I got two phones going, a laptop, and a dang on camera. And I still can't hear y'all half the time. <laughs> so. Oh. It's been terrible, but <laughs> Wonderful, the show must go on. But I got to let y'all know this. Earlier, we took a poll, and the poll was despite all the stereotypes, do you still support marriage? And guess what, y'all? 93% of the people who answered the poll said yes. Definitely. So that says a lot. That kind of gives me some kind of hope. Because we already say all the time, in order to get this culture out of the trash, we need families and men and women in the home together doing what they're supposed to do. So that's that's what we're going to talk about. And we're going to keep it always positive. And I'm going to try to get these ladies to understand how important it is to be kind. You know, I don't, God, it's just, it just bothers me so much. I don't know who they're listening to or what they're listening to. And I don't know what all the struggles are and all the traumas are, but we got to grow up. We got to let it go. If we got to go get some help, lay on somebody's couch, go do it. But we cannot continue to bring that madness to the young men that are trying to stand up today. Because y'all are really trying to stand up and be different. You want to be present. You want to be daddies. You want to be husbands. And I don't want to say we're failing you, but we just don't get it. So we got to continue to have these kind of uh, lives where we're talking from both sides. I'm not going to let the men off the hook either because not, not all of you know what to do. But if we continue to have the communication, black man keeps spreading on his channel, then um, we'll have some kind of blueprint on to what to do. And, you know, you just kind of get in where you fit. <laughs> How about that? So listen, guys, it's been over two hours. And I thank you guys for coming. And chat, I love you all. And I'm just so happy y'all stayed and rode this train with us tonight. You know, the next time it won't be like this. And oh, go, don't let me forget. Tomorrow at 7.30, I will be with Rebecca ba Barrett on her channel. I hope y'all remember Rebecca. She was on LaPeef's show. Uh -huh. I'm going to be her guest tomorrow night. And of course, we're still going to be talking about marriage. She's the yeah. uh, facilitator in that case. So I'm going to be just- Great woman. Great woman. Yes, and a story to tell, right? So I'm going to be over there listening and hopefully gaining knowledge to bring back and vice versa. We can learn from each other. Exactly. So join me tomorrow night on her channel, 730. I would definitely appreciate it. That's and I appreciate all of you time. for being here. And I'll see you soon. Thank you. I don't think it's in me to listen to both. It's so different with distance we roam in the zones where nothing get hurt anymore. I just wish I was home when I stepped through front door. But instead, I'm alone and completely unsure. And even though you're screaming out with the best of intentions, I don't get it. Why do you always gotta ask me to stay? Why you always gotta go?
Laying house, this ain't a home with your soul on the road. Say, why you always gotta go? Laying house, this ain't a home with your soul on the road. See, I've been lost in my thoughts, and my thoughts they too are scared to usher you off. Sorry, Mom, I just thought you were my world. Now you're not. And I'm just sitting, smoking, sloping in the days Cause my days ain't been the same since I drove here the I remember the way you wrote letters in blue ink You and me was in love Think about what your crew think I know your moms probably think I'm a bastard Your pops probably wanna beat my to death and take up in my casket But I got sick of fighting, bickering, fussing Over nothing, cussing Instead of been watching the death of discussions that we once had Days that we once spent in the backseat of our cars We were poets at sunset It's funny how love can fall out the foreground Get pushed into the back of your mind We used to twist his bliff and laugh and relax and you crying and I'm trying to find the reasons So I ask, does forever ever happen? Or is it always fade to black? I can't say No, I always gotta go Laying house, this ain't a home with my soul on the road. I can't stay. No, I always gotta go. Laying house, this ain't a home with my soul on the road.